Next, we come to a story, or rather, I suppose, a response to a story that I had to fight for. I had to fight for my right to parte on this particular one, in so much as uh, Andy wasn't convinced that 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 that, <laughs> that addressing this particular uh, thing w was was. We, 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 we sh you know, was in the realms of a serious archaeologist. In so much as there, there was, I remember um, there was a very famous phrase, I think, from Sir Patrick Moore, suggesting that when when he was asked to debate, uh, you know, I don't know, is gravity real or something, he was saying, well, that's like asking an astronomer to debate whether or not the moon is made of cheese. Uh, and 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 it was a, it was a similar question going on yesterday when we were, when we were finalising this agenda. In so much as there is a question that I've been that I've been asked to consider, and uh, and it is: Are archaeologists destroying Britain's heritage? Are they, are they, Andy, destroying Britain's heritage? I'm. I think there might be a case to answer here. You see, <laughs> you see, this is a response to uh, to a, to a story that we covered last last month, uh, where Historic England were highlighting damage done to historic sites by so-called night hawkers, aka thieves with metal detectors, who uh, often turn up on sites at night uh, and will take away unknown artifacts. Hence, hence one of the problems here, um, and uh, the conversation went along the lines that, that uh, for example, we hadn't uh, acknowledged the, the PAS, which we have done, obviously, in previous videos quite often. In fact, I think last year, the PA, a PAS celebrated an anniversary, which we uh, acknowledged in a segment. Um, and, and the conversation ended up uh, in a place where I was presented with a link uh, that, where the commenter said, this pretty much outlines my view of, of what um, the balance between archaeology and metal detecting is and should be. And it, it was a perfectly lovely conversation, um, but the article <laughs> leaves something to be desired. I hate to say it, I really do. I shared this on the RK Suit Facebook page because I was like, "Am I reading this right? Am I have I got something wrong here?" What's what? Because uh, it didn't, it didn't. I did wanted to make sure I wasn't going crazy reading what looks like very sensible um, statements, but actually are in in entirely in in incorrect. And someone said, well, thank you, Mr. Swoop. I was having a lovely day, and then I read this. <laughs> and this is before COVID as well. Yeah. So, so before, before the virus um, came along, I ruined someone's day with this article. And I, I just wanted just to take a bit of time just to talk about it, because this question, are archaeologists destroying Britain's heritage? It's not only provocative, but also if, I, I, I believe, if, if experts don't respond when they are presented with this, or if, you know, in my case, I'm somewhat an expert, you know, in, in terms of being an archaeologist, um, yeah. then we invite speculation and the vacuum is filled with, with even more crap, basically. So I would like to talk about this and to respond. So what do you think, uh, Andy? Are archaeologists destroying Britain's heritage by Andrew Castle. Well, I think, can, 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 I, can I just step back for a moment and say that the reason I was questioning, uh, discussing this this month was on uh, journalistic grounds because it ain't news. This, is, you know, this, this yeah. article is uh, rehashing arguments that have been had for years and will continue to be had. Mm -hmm. Um, it's actually dated, I think, uh, November 2019. Um, it was published in, uh, yes, uh, uh, in, in, in November 2019. Mm -hmm. um, it's a view, and everybody's entitled to their view. Andrew Castleton, who wrote the article, is entitled to his view. Um, he should probably think and research a bit more before he commits to typing it up and submit it but you know fair enough it's a privilege to me i've seen i've seen worse research things published in mainstream newspapers well so so, so um, a, a, the, a broad sweep of the argument made by andrew is that archaeologists for a start cannot do all the work we can't find all the things and also look, he argues that that, that in in yeah, that in doing look, archaeology often cut, archaeologists ignore where things are likely to be found. So there's a, the there's, there's a characterization the of, for example, excavation yeah. that is blunt and uh, not correct. Go ahead. Cut to the, cut to the chase. Mm -hmm. This 
is implicitly and in places sort of explicitly an argument which many metal detectors have put over the, over time mm -hmm. that they should be let loose on archaeological sites first to get rid to find everything in the topsoil um and uh the archaeologists don't find and um yeah the, and and then uh, every, everybody would will be happy and they've justified their existence mm. um the fact is that uh, the fact that that sort of falls down where with certain, some metal detector risks not all um when they will be told that actually anything you find gets kept for the site archive and you can't claim on if anything's treasure yeah um because we don't and therefore that, that same goes for uh, for our sites yeah. um and some metal detectors will be quite happy with that metal detectorists will be quite happy with that and others would run a mile from something like that well others uh, we, oh, indeed indeed in recent months and years we've observed others running a mile from that that's not speculation it, it, we've seen it no it, um, it, it, exactly at the same time you know there there are legitimate criticisms that can be made are made here and can be made of some commercial sites mm -hmm. um you know uh, the, the commercial system is very fallible it works to very strict timetables it sometimes means that work is cut short or certain elements of a site are maybe not as examined in as close detail as ethically they should be but that is usually once you get into the archaeological stratification not the topsoil True, but also uh, again, I, I would, I suppose, I would say ethically, but also, I guess, I guess in terms of in terms of absolute um, textbook best practice, you would start with a trowel yeah. and you would use nothing other than a trowel until you got down to natural. Yeah. Uh, in this instance, one of the criticisms levied at, at particularly commercial archaeology is the notion that topsoil is simply scooped off like icing on a cake in order to get to the cake, uh, ignoring the fact that actually, even in those situations where topsoil and uh you know modern so-called layers or early modern layers are scooped away to, to get down to medieval and roman etc um if that's deemed necessary i.e death space assessment says you're unlikely to find something from those periods of import in this soil yeah. there would be a watching yeah. brief uh there was someone, be, someone will be watching this happen and it will be done in increments of five ten or twenty centimeters at a time depending on the yeah. skill of the of the the machine yeah. operator if there's a digger on site for example so it's not Absolutely. just a you know six feet or well, three feet of soil just gets pulled out no. of the ground as no. characterized here what one of the one of the the ending paragraphs in this article says that metal detecting is purely and simply the searching for random losses in a decon decontextualized resource that that's that's a misunderstanding of what decontextualized so something means. Which, something at, at, well, also in fact the the, the the full paragraph is in fact a paragraph sentence well, well says, metal so, 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 so just before we move on to that bit the, first of all yeah. decontextualized is actually outside of uh in the archaeological sense is outside of the ground so if something is taken if something is found accidentally especially Precisely. in spoil there's, there's, having been dug up that's decontextualized if it's exactly in the ground it is in its context so that's even if, it's, even if it's in context 001 the topsoil precisely and even if that context has been tilled over by 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 farming that is its context it goes exactly. on to say something which orthodox orthodox so-called archaeological techniques cannot replicate uh, and the fact remains that metal detectorists have contributed enormously to britain's heritage locating important artifacts which would otherwise never see the light of day now that is true but that in so much as Many are many are many metal detectorists have found artifacts that that well maybe not otherwise wouldn't have seen the light of day. You can't you can, that's an unquant unverifiable uh, um, statement assertion assertion. Yeah, um, but it is true that yes, art, uh, that metal detecting has found a great deal of important artifacts uh, in, in, in recent in the past yeah twenty thirty years in Britain. Uh, um, let's go ahead. Uh, well, uh, but I would say the, the the biggest problem I have with that paragraph, and we discussed it when we were prepping this. Mm -hmm. Um, is that he talk, um, talks about simply searching for random losses in a decontextualized resource. Now, we know now that routinely metal detectorists dig into, through you know, context 001, the topsoil, into archaeological context to recover material, particularly hoards. Yeah, yeah. Um, we saw, we saw and, a couple of months ago an example in, uh, in Antrim, was it? Um, yes, I think so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, a couple of guys who were very got very excited about about finding something, and then in the in in, in their video, it was clear that they were just you know 
truffle hunting. But then in their uh, their yeah. statement later, they claimed that oh, well, I was looking for a wedding ring or something, and blah blah blah. Uh, it, 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 you know, it, it's 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 the and this is I guess the key point. This is the reason why I wanted to, to discuss this. Is it's all well and good making uh, ethical and moral moral <laughs> ethical and moral assertions about metal detecting. But it needs to be backed up by the community, and that community also needs to hold its members to account. And all too often, uh, even the, mo the most high-profile fines, we haven't linked to it, but there is a fine this month, which I won't, I won't say specifically what, what fine it is, uh, but a fine this month that's, that's been mentioned on the BBC, that uh, it's highly likely has come from someone whose, whose ethics and morals and practice are very questionable so this stuff floats to, to the top it's very public it's very much praised in fact we recently saw a government minister uh, no 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 so not government minister sorry, a prominent journalist rather sorry mm -hmm. praising britain's uh, heritage heroes uh, in, a, in a way and in that... the in the past government ministers have talked about citizen archaeologists and so exactly on. yeah yeah, yeah. And it... using that term to describe metal detectorists no i get you know i don't you know we should not i think you know we, we're certainly not setting out the pillory metal detectorists. No. And many metal detectorists work very closely with archaeologists and to the benefit of both sides. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, because we're, we're, we're working to the same end. We're not actually both sides, we're working to the same end. Precisely, yeah. But, yeah. but, you know, I, I, but I do think, again, again th this article is a piece of not particularly well researched special pleading. I mean, he says the fact. Just, just complete the the, the the payoff, if you like, the punchline. The fact remains that metal detectorists have contributed enormously to Britain's heritage locating important artifacts, which would otherwise never see the light of day. He said, and then he says in a single line paragraph, "Can commercial archaeologists make the same claim?" Well, actually, yes. Yeah. Has he ever read any reports from any of the major? Well, units? the answer is no. Probably not. Has he? No. Has he? Has he looked <laughs> on the on the archaeology the archaeology data service archive for all the grey literature and so on? There is more reporting there of archaeological evidence than any metal detectorist has ever put in, in into the PAS. Mm -hmm. yeah. In fact, in fact, I mean, say, saying you found something to an accuracy of a hundred meters isn't. Uh, it, it, it's report. It's reporting you found something sort of over there. Yeah, it's <laughs> not an archaeological report. Well, in that sense, if someone found something within a hundred meters of of where I'm sitting, they could have found it in any one of four houses. <laughs> like, you know, um, the other thing as well to bear in mind is, that, for example, this month a very prominent exhibition uh, launched um, from I think Crossway Cross Rail, uh, examining the archaeology that they've uncovered through the course of a, yeah. a civil engineering project and commercial archaeology project in London. Okay. Uh, so yes, again, yes, of course, commercial archaeologists can make that claim, and also I think there's a disingenuous um, characterization of archaeology in this this piece as well. Uh, for example, sometimes, uh, so quote, sometimes a half-hearted effort is made to scan the stripped surfaces before removal, but that involves looking only at a limited detector depth, slice of a meter or more uh, of material, while the spoil heaps are disregarded. That's horseshit spoil heaps are not disregarded in fact often spoil heaps are the places where where uh, metal detectorists on site are deployed to make sure that archaeologists have not missed something in the ground Precisely. that is and in fact, I, I, nonsense. I, yeah I mean, yeah absolutely and in fact I, again personally speaking i've worked with metal detectorists performing exactly that role yeah Precisely. As Precisely. well as, as as well as scanning an area where we were opening up a trench to highlight where we might come across something in the topsoil. Yeah. So and well, and in that sense, a little bit like uh, 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 often is the case, for example, in pseudo pseudo archaeological writing. Uh, the, the, the assumption is made that you agree with that point. And the next set, section says, whatever efforts are made, uh, the whole process sees untold losses. Uh, uh, and that is only part of the story with large areas of stratified archaeological uh, finds also lost to development due to percentage excavation values set in the excavation tender documents. In, in which sampling, case, of course, yeah. he, what he doesn't do there, of course, is sample the, uh, or cite the research uh, that, has, that has been done um, dead space research, in, yeah, prior to. Well, no, what, he, what he's also not citing is the research that's been done into the number of artifacts that are recovered by metal detectorists and are never reported. Yeah, yeah. Which is, again, in itself unquantifiable, precisely because of, Pre the, yeah. of the, the epic 
and it's unfortunate I have to say this because I do believe that hobby that that, that, that metal detecting is a legitimate hobby. Indeed. Frankly, I I I have enjoyed it in the past at the beach. It is fun. I found uh, a, 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 I think a tin or something once <laughs> when I was a child. It was great, and it's really it's exciting. But there are undeniably epic. Uh, voids in terms of moral and ethical practice in the realm yes. of metal detecting. That doesn't mean all yes. metal detectors are bad. It doesn't mean Absolutely that they don't not. have a place in, in, in helping to tell our nation's archaeological story. But it does mean that statements like this are are shells. And, and as much as they read like a very compelling argument, once you actually examine the assertions, yeah. It's, it's 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 simply yeah. not built on anything, and this is the reason why I wanted to yeah. address it. The, in okay. in short, archaeologists are not destroying Britain's heritage. To be blunt, <laughs> yeah, that's no. essentially what it pulls. And down. in fact, they're recording more. They're they're recording more of it than metal detectorists actually do. Metal detectorists perform a valuable role in yes. highlighting certain kinds of artifacts. Mm -hmm. The clues in the word metal. Yes. Um, and but the pro. You know, it, it is only a, it, it is one tool in the repertoire of archaeologists, and we deploy many, many more tools, which I would argue give us greater understanding. Now, you know, our sector would be the poorer without the cooperation of some very skilled, very committed metal detectorists who I hope will continue to work with archaeologists in future because you know there, there, there are valuable things we can do, we can do, we can learn and, and do working with each other, as you say. But I think bits of the problem with this is it's special pleading, and in fact, if there's the, the giveaway is it, the the article cites concern about the Department of Culture, Media, Sport, and Di the Digital Culture, Media, and Sport um, consultation about the future of metal detecting in the Treasure Act, which the report is due. We've mentioned it before. Mm -hmm. um, there is speculation that it will recommend things like banning large-scale metal detecting rallies and even possibly including in, um, uh, suggesting some kind of licensing or permit system, yeah. which um, many metal detectorists would find very disturbing. And yet people, uh, people in a very similar social economic bracket have licenses to go fishing, they have licenses shoot, to go hunting, anything. they have licenses exactly. to blah, blah, blah. Yeah, exactly. Precisely, or to fly precisely. special drones and equipment or to, you know, yeah, precisely. Yeah, it, 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 exactly. We, we, we know we accept restrictions on many, many parts of our lives. You know, you and I, we have to have a license and in, in insurance to drive our car. Yeah. You know, um, so it, yeah. It, it's um, it's it, it's a bit of special pleading. It's not new. It highlights a number of issues, though. Um, and um, but I, I mean, I think what's interesting about the um, this particular website that the article comes from, it, it, it's from a website called Archaeology and Metal Detecting Magazine, mm -hmm. and it is an you know in the title, it's trying to bring together the two sections. In fact, it's primarily a metal detecting site, um, although it it does mention as uh, one of its recommended sites a certain site called Archeosoup. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I haven't <laughs> noticed that. <laughs> uh, no, which is fine, and, you know, and, and good. You know, I hope people do follow that link, and, and obviously, you know, and find Archeosoup useful and helpful. You know, as, as, as I know it is, and you know, mm. it's it's your baby. Um, but. I should, uh, there's, yeah. another, there's another article. There's another article on the side, though, which I, I, again I find disturbing because it, it, it's to do with conspiracy theory. Mm. Um, there, we we cited earlier the Historic England report about um, metal detecting on scheduled sites, and there is a uh, an article in the magazine uh, which talks about that particular uh, report and alleges, and it, you know, fair enough to make an allegation, um, that um, the evidence cited by Historic England wasn't in fact by metal, metal detectors, it was in fact animal activity, foxes and moles and badgers. Yeah, so making now, the argument that the holes that are reported are not what people think they are. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Mm. Now, Knowing that some of the people behind that reporting have been investigating and getting prosecutions, successful prosecutions of metal detectorists for around 10 years now, mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I think we should treat that kind of claim with a certain amount of scepticism, particularly when it cites unnamed sources in the metal detecting world asserting yeah. this. You know, but, but again, that, and that 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 in that sense is uh, is a form of journalistic integrity and, and, and morals and ethics as well. You know, there, there, there are questions. If if you want to make a sound argument, uh, as particularly criticising uh, archaeological methodology, it needs to be informed, and it also needs to 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 back itself up with with actual evidence as opposed to hearsay, and indeed not char- not simply characterising. Uh, people who clearly um, are at odds with that community as being idiots because yeah. that's a that, that there's a bias there and any, any reasonable person reading that will go well why are you suggesting this um, and the answer is because there are questions to be answered about the the way that the, the, the metal detecting as a hobby is conducted uh, and uh, and again just to reiterate I'm not against metal detecting I am no. against this kind of characterization of archaeology in order to further and to excuse bad actors who are metal detectorists. Yes. Yeah. I yeah, I I I'm I'm with you entirely on that. 